Holla love, holla love, got cold, I don't know. I'm my friends, I'm my friends, turn to fold, I don't know. For the end, for the end, saw go, saw go. What you six? Yeah, yeah, better know, better know it. Times change, time change, people change, they gon' change, they gon' love you, then they hate you, yeah, it's strange. Yeah, that's right, saw you out, saw you out for some change. Yeah, yeah, they go crazy for that money, they don't range. Hey, Lord forgive them, cause they know now what they do. They do, messing with a the prince, they ain't even got a clue. They don't, blind them with the light when he see me coming. And I hate it, couldn't trust me, tell them this ain't nothing new. Ain't nothing new. Watch your back, better watch. Watch your back, better watch. Keep the circle tight, dog, never slack, never loose. Do your friends, do you know? Got your back, got your back. I know the ones around me, yeah, I'm keeping track. Holla love, holla love, got cold, I don't know. I'm my friends, I'm my friends, turn to fold, I don't know. For the end, for the end, saw go, saw go. What you six? Yeah, yeah, better know, better know it. Holla love, holla love, got cold, I don't know. I'm my friends, I'm my friends, turn to fold, I don't know. For the end, for the end, saw go, saw go. What you six? Yeah, yeah, better know, yeah. Never take a word, show me how you getting down, yeah. Is you with it when a man up and when he down? All right, next question here. So Hebrews says, Hebrews 6 and 4, does this pertain to a, a husband that goes back to sins in the world? Is there a chance he will repent and come back to the laws? Only God knows. But go back to he go to Hebrews chapter 6. So let's read it, 4 through 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4. See, we, we prophets. Prophets ain't uh, fortune tellers. No, we're not fortune tellers. We don't know what his life holds for him. Uh, read that. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So it's it's um it's impossible to renew them to repentance if they do what? Hebrews 10 verse 26. It's impossible to renew them to repentance if they continue doing this. There's nothing that nobody can do for them. Ain't no magic scripture. It ain't no loving in the world. If they've turned their back on God, it is what it is until death comes. Read that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So if they continue to willfully sin, there's nothing you can do for them. I, and, and, you know, uh, a lot of you all be putting on these groups. Can y'all pray for my auntie? She's in the hospital with um, high blood pressure from what? Eating pork, shrimp, crab and lobster her whole life. And you want the righteous to pray for her. No, we're not. Verse 27. Verse 27. But a certain fearful looking for a, of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. That's the Bible. I know they don't read that to you in Christianity, but it's the truth. That's what it is. Ain't nothing we can do for them. Ain't nothing you can do for them. The judgment of God has taken place. And when the judgment of God comes, you better move out the way for you get caught in it. Because the flesh don't mean nothing to God. He'll kill it. Put, come back up there, stand before him. Like, well, why did you stand in the way of judgment? I was, you see what I was doing? I'm going to put you back in some flesh, go on back down there. And when it happens again next time, get the hell out the way. And Lord's will, your spirit reminds you when that time comes. All right, uh, give me 1 John 5 and 16. I'm going to show you something else. 1 John chapter 5, verse 16. And, I, and do we feel, you know, we, we feel bad for you because you have to go through it, right? It ain't, we, it ain't like we absolve to emotions. We know you care for your family. You grew up with them. They raised you. So we know that you care for them. So we're not insensitive to that. Mainly talking to you sisters because you the ones be doing it. Uh, we're not insensitive to that, but get out of your emotions and stop asking the righteous to send up prayers for your wicked family that don't care nothing about God. You don't talk to them before about it. They don't care. And now you want us to pray that they come out of what they are in so they can keep on sinning against God. It makes no sense. That's all emotions. All right. Welcome to the truth. Y'all first uh, John chapter five, verse 16. First John chapter five, verse 16. 
If any man see his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death. So there are some sins that are which are not unto death, right? Read on. He shall ask. He shall ask what? He shall ask that um, he re- that the Lord recovers him, that he recovers his spirit, and he gets back on track. Because there are some sins that are not unto death, right? Read on. And he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. That life is what? It's the scriptures. It's the word. Give me that Proverbs chapter 6 verse 23 to show what that life is we're supposed to give them that can bring them back to life. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 23. Yep. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. There you go. So the law is light, and in that there is reproof. There's correction within that that can bring them back from the, the path of death that they're going down. Now go back to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 16. I want you to pick up where it says there is a sin. Verse 16, there is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. So it's a certain time when God says that, hey, it's, don't pray for him at all. Just let me do what I'm going to do to them. If they recover themselves, it be of the Lord. But you better move out the way because there is a sin that is unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. Now, what is what is that sin that is unto death? You got to understand what's that sin that's unto death? Uh, go to the book of Matthew. You know where it's at? Off says nine. Uh, blaspheme. Here Matthew's we go. Ten. Matthew chapter twelve. Let's or read 12. verse. Yeah, let's read that. It might be in ten also, but I want the one in Matthew twelve. Matthew chapter twelve, verse thirty-one and thirty-two. This is out of Jesus the Christ on mouth. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. We might read down to 33, but go ahead. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. That's why we um, give them that word that can bring them back. The laws, right? That give them life. Read. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. The whole blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Shall not be forgiven unto men. Now, now, here's the question. You got to ask, what is the Holy Spirit where God said, I, I, no forgiveness in that one, buddy. That's a sin unto death. You better move. Does any brother black shirt know? What is the Holy Spirit? What's the scripture say? The Holy Spirit. Duel. Let's see what Duel got. What's the Holy Spirit? Just give me the word. The law. The laws of God. I like it. Let's go to it. For the newer brothers and sisters in here, go to Acts. Chapter 7, and let's read 51, and we're going to jump to verse 53 just to make it clear. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. So ye resist the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, as your fathers did. So it's talking about past tense, right? When did they uh, refu- refuse it? It was in the wilderness, right? Now jump down to verse 53 to show what the Holy Spirit is that they refused. Read. Verse 53. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels uh, and have not kept it. So the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit they was refusing was the laws. Just read the Old Testament. You read the Old Testament. We was rebellious as hell. God was killing. He killed off the whole first generation. We were so rebellious. So we was rejecting the law in the wilderness. Now let's go back to Mark chapter 12 to show what Christ said that you do this. Ain't no, ain't no coming back from it. Matthew, read that verse 31. Matthew chapter 12 verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you. All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Can we fix his mic? Go ahead. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. So if you teach against the laws of God, Christ said there is no forgiveness for you. So uh, putting the precepts together, uh, Hebrews 6, where it says um, it talks about uh, enlightening them again once they have known the truth. You come in here, then you leave here. And then you say uh, Christianity is the way to eternal life. We all know Christianity don't keep no laws. Christ said ain't nothing he can do for you. And he came to save you from your sins. And he said he's going to step out the way. 
He gonna tell God gonna tell move, son. And Christ gonna move right out the way. And judgment gonna come right down that thing. But if they do not do that, it's still a chance for them to repent because our people are rebellious. Now jump down to ver- read verse thirty two. Verse thirty two, and whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. Because a lot of times we do it out of ignorance. You know, all our brothers that are in Islam and whatever else, some of them are atheists or agnostic. They just, some of them just say stuff out of ignorance, not knowing, right? It's a difference between them. Matter of fact, give me that in uh, Acts chapter 14, I believe it is, is verse 30. Am I, am I, am I right on that? 17 and 30. Yep. Yeah, I'm shooting from the hip now. Y'all got to bear with me. Yeah, Acts. Y'all got ch- me thinking. Go ahead. Chapter 17, verse 30. And the times of this ignorance. At the time of the ignorance that we all walked in, what did God do? God winked at. Now God winks at it. So some people may say some things against Jesus the Christ, and he'll wink at it because he's like, you don't know. You come, you in slavery. You in land of your captivity. Or you, you in white Jesus uh, religion. You, you just don't know. God wink at it and give you mercy. Read on. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So now once you hear that truth, he commands you to repent. Now go back to uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 32. So once you hear it, you better repent. Matthew. you repent, you might fall as a righteous man, but you don't sin willfully. That's the difference. Read that in verse 32. Matthew chapter 12, verse 32. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. That's that's Bible right there. (laughs) That's Bible. So what does that mean? You bet not turn your back on God, on Christ, on these laws, and go out there and say, I don't believe in that stuff. Or you bet not leave here and be like, oh, I'm a congregate by myself, and I'm still in, I'm still in the walking in the faith of Jesus. No, you ain't, because the commandments cause, tell you to uh, congregate. You can't congregate by yourself, all right? You are not, you're not Beyonce where you say, me, myself, and I is my best friend. You crazy. <laughs> me, myself, and I is all I got. In, you don't believe that song. She walking around with blonde hair in her head. <laughs> you better bring your body here and congregate. All right? Now read verse 33. Verse 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good. So either you're going to be uh, on fire for God 100%. You ain't going to be lukewarm, one foot in, one foot out. You come to the Sabbath on Saturday. Then you go to uh, uh, White Man Jesus on Sunday. Uh, you celebrate Passover and you celebrate Easter. Um, uh, uh, you don't steal, but you sell uh, bootleg CDs. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else, read on. Or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. So either be good or be evil. Be righteous or be wicked. That's what Christ is telling you. No, ain't no in-betweens. And, he, and, and Christ made sure he was on the earth, he said it. And then when he left, he made sure he said it again. Revelation 3, verse 15, 16. See, the Bible is uh, what you call it repetitive it has to say things over and over again because there is no other hard-headed no more hard-headed people on the earth than the israelites rebellious against god everything just want to do their own thing read that revelation 3 15 16 revelation chapter 3 verse 15 i know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot i would that thou were cold or hot Christ said, I wish you was either evil or you was righteous. Be either one. Don't be in the middle because what happens when you're in the middle? You teach other people that it's okay to be lukewarm. Oh, I'm good when people look at me. But, you know, in my own privacy, I do my own thing. You you do more harm doing that instead of just be always wicked. So all the wicked people, when they see you, they can just follow your path. And the righteous that are searching for the truth, they're not confused. And they, and the path for them to come into the truth is just a smooth, smooth selling. Either be hot or cold. Read on. So then, because thou art lukewarm. Lukewarm. And neither hot. Nor, neither cold nor hot. You ain't wicked or you ain't righteous. Go ahead. I, I will spew thee out of my mouth. That means he's going to kill you. 
He has set you up for judgment. That's what that means. All right. So uh, to answer your question, will a husband, can he repent? Yep, he can. As long as he don't blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, there is hope for him. And Lord's will, Lord's will, they come out of it. All right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.